So now we have this line integral of a vector field in a form where we can evaluate it. So it's just going to be integral from A to B. F evaluated at your x of t, y of t, and z of t if you have it, dotted with its derivative, dt. <clears throat> All right. So, just so you know which way to proceed depending on what kind of problem it is. So, the line integral of a scalar function f, I guess it be a vector here, f of x, y, so that'd be integral from a to b, <coughs> f of x of t, y of t, square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime t squared dt. So when you're integrating a scalar valued function over a curve, this is what you use. Whereas, if you have a line integral of a vector field, then what you're really doing is you're integrating the stop product of a vector field with a tangent vector. So it's going to be integral from a to b, f of x of t, y of t, dot product with x prime of t, y prime of t, dt. Okay. So it's important to keep in mind which one of these you're going to use. Only one of them makes sense to use depending upon whether you're integrating a scalar value function over a curve or a vector value function. <clears throat> so in this case, the integrals can often be, turn out to be easier because you're not having to deal with this pesky square root factor. <clears throat> All right, so let's do example of this. So if you're given a vector field, f of x, y, z, it would be z, y, minus x, and the uh, curve <coughs> that you have is uh, Find by this function R of t, which is has components x of t, y of t, z of t. That's going to be equal to t sine t and cosine t. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, what are you going to do? All right. Oh, and this is for t between zero and pi. That's where your limits come from. All right. So the line integral of f over a curve is going to be the integral from zero to pi. And what you'll do is you'll take in these x of t, y of t, z of t, and you'll plug them in to your function f. So we're going to have z, which is cosine t, y, which is sine t, and minus x, so we'll have minus t. All right, so this is your f of r of t. Dot product with the vector of your derivatives. So we have 1, cosine t, 
minus sine t dt. So now you can carry out the dot product. So we'll have cosine t plus sine t cosine t <coughs> plus t sine t dt. Um. Oh. What about that last step? Um, I th actually, I think I messed up something in the notes. Well, oh, what? I'm, I'm just a little confused about the integrations. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Um, all right. I was whooping this up at the last minute before class. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> so, um, okay, I just wanted to check here. Okay, I'll let it go. Okay, in the notes, when I get to this point, I have a minus here, or it should be a plus. It ends up not affecting the value of the integral because the integral of this part is going to be zero anyway. Um, but that should still be fixed. Old style courtyard by Marriott Penn, new style courtyard by Marriott Penn. Go <laughs> <Little> figure. <clears throat> All right. Anyway. Um, <laughs> no, my brain is still so scrambled from traveling that being in Europe feels normal and being in Mississippi feels exotic. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so, so go ahead and integrate these. We need to use different approach of all three. This is something we can do directly. Here we can use the uh, use substitution. And that one, how does that one have to be done? T sine T. Five parts. Yeah. Oh. I think I've done that one so many times by parts. I think I'd remember what the final result was. I, I never remember it either. <laughs> I know it's just, there's like a nice formula for it you can use, but if you care to try to remember it. All right, so we'll break this up into three. All right, so here, Cosine t, that's just going to be sine t from 0 to pi. That one's no problem. Okay, here we can let u be equal to sine t, and du is cosine t dt. So, with that in mind, what is the antiderivative of this going to turn out to be? Uh, no. Uh, what? On the very first one, yeah, the yeah, top? Yeah. Derivative of sine is cosine. Oh, really? Yeah, you go the wrong way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, one half u squared, or u would be sine squared t from 0 to pi. Um, but then, when you plug in the limits in both of these, you're just going to get zeros across the board. They don't contribute anything. And now for this, integration by parts, u, v, du, dv. So, pick u to be t, du is dt, dv is sine t, dt, and then v is minus cosine t. So what you're going to get is u times v 